Hey guys, so this video is a little different. Um, I've really kind of been wanting to do a video about this for a while. I just really wanted to do this video because it means a lot to me. I've seen so much about violence against the trans community. Um, Obviously, I'm not ignorant to the violence that happens all around the world, but being a member of the trans community, it does hit home and does make me very sad when I see violence and hatred and to this extent, you know, death when it comes to the trans community. Um, I have a list here of trans people who have been reported, you know, who have been killed so far in 2017. I'm just going to read a little bit about them. Um, I'm sure that there are obviously others, but these are just the ones that have been reported in front of me, so I thought I would just go through a few of them, just to kind of share their stories a little bit. Um, I know that this might not do much, but I feel almost like a responsibility to talk about it because it's extremely sad, it's devastating and these are real people who lived real lives and when I think about some of the things that I've had to go through in my life to get to this point where I can live my life as a trans woman, I know that I've had it, you know, somewhat easier than a lot of people and for people to go through all of those struggles in order to find love in themselves um, and they're strong enough to live authentically, for their life to then just be taken of them because of something that they couldn't control. Like I said, I've got no other words other than it's just devastating. So without further ado, I am going to read through some of our trans victims today. I apologise if I pronounce names wrong. Um, it's not to be unsympathetic. It, I'm just pre-warning, I haven't looked through the names yet. I'm reading these live on camera. I haven't pre-read these at all. So if I do mess up the names, then I do apologize. So we have Misha Caldwell, who was a 41 years old trans woman who lived in Mississippi, Canton, Mississippi. Misha Caldwell was found shot to death January 4th along a rural road near Canton, Mississippi. Caldwell, 41 years old, was a hairstylist and a makeup artist in Canton and was well liked in the community. I think people will miss her style and her personality. She won many hair battles and she hosted competitions in Canton for the young people. Friends believe she may have been targeted for being transgender, but police did not comment on a motive. We have Jamie Lee, Wounded Arrow. Jamie Lee, Wounded Arrow, was found dead in her apartment January the 6th but friends believe she may have been killed as early as January 1st. Police labelled her death a homicide. She was 28. Wounded Arrow was a member of the Oglala Lakota tribe and part of the Sioux Falls Two Spirit and Allies group. She worked at Lawrence and Schiller Teleservices as a customer service agent and studied social work at Oglala Lakota College and nursing as a Georgetown University summer program. China Doll Dupree. Nationally known drag performer China Doll Dupree, a transgender woman, was shot to death February 25th near a shopping centre in New Orleans. Neighbours reported hearing eight to ten gunshots. Dupree, who was also known as China Gibson, had been living in California but returned to her former hometown of New Orleans to celebrate Mardi Gras with friends and relatives. She had toured in drag shows across the nation and was famous in the pageant and ball scene. She was just a really good person, a friend told the new local newspaper. Everyone loved her. Jaquarius Holland, 18 years old, was shot to death February 19th in Monroe, LA. She was shot during an argument, and police have issued a warrant for the arrest of Malcolm Harvey on a charge of second-degree murder. Friend Chestnut Littleberry told Mike she often stayed with Littleberry, who said Holland was like a younger sister to her and, told her, and taught her self-acceptance. I struggled with accepting myself and being who I am, and she always helped me with that. Little Berry told Mike, I want her to rest peacefully. Sierra McElveen. 
Sierra McElveen was stabbed to death February 27th in New Orleans. She was dragged out of a car by a man who had already stabbed her. He slammed her head to the ground. <laughs> then returned to the car and drove away. A witness said McLeaven was taken to a nearby hospital where she was pronounced dead. I'm so thrown right now, New Orleans transgender activist Sirius Sinclair told Mike. Sinclair, a program coordinator at the Tulane Drop-In Wellness Center, had worked with McElveen, sorry, doing outreach to homeless people in the city. Alfonso Watson, 38, died of a gunshot wound to the stomach, March 22, in Baltimore. Police found her about 4.15 a.m. and took her to Johns Hopkins Hospital, where she died shortly thereafter. Witnesses said they heard someone screaming for help, heard shots, and then saw two men driving away. She came out as transgender in her teens and went by the nickname Peaches. Her mother, Peggy Walker, told the Baltimore Sun she was, always, she was a very caring, passionate, fun person to be around, always in a talkative and playful mood. Walker said, very close to the Lord, she didn't belong to a church or anything like that, but she always talked about the Lord. She said Watson had worked at an upscale retailer in Virginia, where she was one of the best salespeople. Brenda Bostick, May 4th, 2017. Brenda Bostick, 59, died May 4th to a severe head injury. She sustained in a beating April 25th. She was found on the sidewalk outside of a Five Guys restaurant in New York City, Chelsea neighborhood. Joseph Griffin, 26, has been charged with manslaughter in this case and is accused of beating Bostick with a lone, long metal up with a long metal object. He has pleaded not guilty and is being held without bail. Griffin had been arrested after behaving erratically and jumping into traffic, smashing a taxi's windshield. He claimed that Bostick had stolen his backpack, but there was no evidence of that. Cheryl Faulkner. Cheryl Faulkner, 46, died May 16 at Caroline's Medical Center in Charlotte, NC, of injuries sustained in a November attack. She was found beaten beside a trash bin. November 30th in Charlotte, Police have ruled her death a homicide. Kenny McFadden. Kenny McFadden, 26, was found dead in the San Antonio River in San Antonio, Texas, April 9th. But her death was not clarified as a homicide as a homicide until June. McFadden, who was misgendered in the first accounts of her death, worked at a restaurant in Riverwalk, a popular San Antonio entertainment area, and was in the process of transitioning. Friends said she was outgoing and loved to sing. Josie Berrios. The burned body of Josie Berrios, 28, of Ith Ithaca, New York, was discovered June 13 at a construction site in the city. A can of gasoline was next to her body. Michael Davies, 45, was arrested the same day and charged with second-degree murder and first-degree arson. He has pleaded not guilty. Berrios performed in drag under the name Kimbrella Rose. Sorry, I had to take a little break. Berrios performed in drag under the name Kimbrella Rose as part of the House of Merlot and was in the process of adopting the name Kendra Adams. She would take every negative thing that people brought about her and every aspect of her personality that could be degraded and blow it back at everyone. Colton Brady, a friend and fellow House of Merlot performer, told Mike that's what made her so great on stage. So they are just a few of the members of the trans community who have lost their lives so far this year. That is too many. It is a hate crime. It is wrong. These are just people trying to live their lives. I'm lost for words. I didn't just after reading those, it's just, it's just devastating. Trans people are people too. Trans women are women too. Trans men are men too. Well, I can hope 
is that this video helps enlighten that. And also, I just want to say to anyone who is in the trans community who is watching this, whether you are older than me, younger than me, no matter what stage in your transition you are, your life matters. It is extremely important. And as a trans community, we are here for you. I am here for you. I know how it feels to wonder if your life is worth it and to wonder whether it would just be easier if you were to take your own life because sometimes carrying on seems too difficult. I've been in that position. But we need to keep fighting because that fight in us is what makes us special. Your life is worth everything and I love you. Thank you for watching this video and stay safe everyone. Love you. Bye.